Welcome back. Today we're making these pot of gold cupcakes. So these are perfect for St. Patrick's Day and you can either make them boozy or you can make them kid friendly. So I'm starting off with a chocolate cupcake and this is actually my Bailey's chocolate cupcake. I'm cutting the cupcake in half and it's still actually a little bit frozen, you can see there, which makes it easier to stack. I'm spreading a dab of buttercream on a tiny little dessert board that's four inches across and I'm piping some chocolate buttercream on top of that. So this just makes our cupcake kind of into a little mini cake. I'm going to pipe some frosting around our cupcake stack and create a little crumb coat. So if you wanted to, you could just go straight in and add a thick layer of frosting and just do one coat. But I really wanted to get the shape of our pot really precise and it just felt wrong not adding a crumb coat. So you can use your discretion here and if you can get it smooth on your first try, feel free to do that. I just also love frosting so I went a little bit ham. So I'm now adding on my second thicker layer of frosting once I chilled our crumb coat in the freezer for about 10 minutes. And I'm using my small offset spatula at first to spread it and then to smooth out the top because the pot has that nice kind of lip on top and we want our cupcakes to look like that. I'm smoothing it again with my acetate sheet, which is really just a thin piece of plastic. I order mine on Amazon and then cut them down. So once I had smoothed the frosting, I actually used a heated sharp knife just to really get the top level. And then I added some yellow buttercream on top of that. I smoothed this out with my same offset spatula, which I'd wiped off. Make sure you wipe it off. You don't want to get any black frosting mixed in with that. But once it was smoothed out, I added some yellow sanding sugar on top and just kind of pressed it in gently to keep it in place. And then I added these gold sprinkles that are made by Wilton that look exactly like little coins. So I really love those, but I added the sanding sugar underneath just to give it a little bit more dimension. Next, I added some small details around the base of our pot to look like its feet and then two tiny little handles. So for this part, you can see my black frosting is in a different smaller piping bag and I cut a tiny little opening to do this. You don't need a frosting tip or anything, you can just cut a tiny hole in your bag. So now that our details are on our pot, it's time to work on our rainbow. So this part is totally optional and not necessary, but I feel like at the end of every rainbow is a pot of gold, so I really wanted to include this. So I took about a half a cup of fondant here, rolled it out to be still relatively thick, smooth those edges, and I just cut this shape by hand. I did grab a cupcake for reference to make sure that the top of the rainbow wasn't wider than it. And then I used a mixture of gel food coloring and a little bit of vodka to create this edible paint. So if you don't want to use alcohol, you can also use a clear extract like almond or lemon and that would work great as well. My lines weren't exactly perfect, but whenever that happens, I always just say that whatever I'm making is rustic. So that is just a rustic rainbow. <laughs> so on another little card, I made a cloud out of frosting just to put the other end of the rainbow into. This is also really forgiving because you have a lot of height to stick the rainbow into and keep it in place. So once that was in place and I'd admired it a little bit, it was time to cut in and have a little taste test. So I'm happy to report the cupcakes were super moist and delicious, and hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you want to recreate these cupcakes, the recipe is up on ChellSweets.com.